Welcome back to the lab, folks. So what you're going to look at today is this Fernisi DPS 150 power supply here. What it is is a programmable regulator. You can program it for current regulation and for voltage regulation. It does require a power input. Then it gives you the desired power out, whatever you select. So we're going to go through some of the features of it. One thing we're not going to go through today, though, is the PC software. If after you've seen the video today, you would like to see the PC software, please leave a request on the comments. And if like 30% of the comments request me to do that, I'll do that video as well. No problem. So let's have a, a quick look at it here. We unboxed it before. If you want to go back to that video, I'll leave a, a card up there to you can see the unboxing of it. There's some other things in that video too, so you might not be that interested. So if you order this, you get this basic unit here. Now, Fernisi also sent me this uh, really nice 100 watt uh, power adapter. This is a, one of those nice gallium nitrate ones. And they also sent me one of these really marvelous uh, USB-C cables with a high power capability. So it's really, really flexible stuff too. It's very, very nice. But if you just order the unit by itself, this is what you get here. It's got a tilting screen. It's got a really nice CNC machined case. I can take this off here. Oh, I forgot about that one. Now here on the front panel, you have uh, the adjustment knob that adjusts values up and down for you. You have the, you have the banana jacks. They look like they're brass, which would be nice. And they have nice little thumb screws on them. And if you open up the thumb screws, you can see inside that you, you have uh, holes to put wires through. On the back here, you have a DC barrel jack now this uh, DC barrel jack is a little unusual. It's not the common 2.1 millimeter inner pin by 5.5 millimeter outer. It is a 2.5 millimeter inner pin and five millimeter outer. Make sure you get the right size. This is the USB power in. Here's the switch to switch between them. This here is the USB to go to the PC and for software upgrades. And then over here on this side, you have the, the output power on button. The reason for this block will become obvious in a little while. And then here you have the controls along the top. This is the home control. This selects between different values. This gets you into changing values and enables some other things like the graphic screen. This here gets you into settings. And so they have different functions depending on where you are. Let's get this thing powered up here and then we'll, we'll have a look at all that that I just talked about and look at the menus. This particular power adapter here provides up to 20 volts at five amps. You can get pretty close to 100 watts out of it. All right, so this is the main screen here. Now, if you press this button here for a long period of time, you can bring up the graphic screen. And the graphic screen, you're still, if you press this short time, it'll come up here and you'll be able to switch between the different values. So you can still change your voltage setting and your current setting if you want. Let's go back to the other screen here. And the same thing over here. So if you press that, you go into voltage setting, press it again, you're into current setting. And then you just move back and forth on the digits like this, and you can up and down them with this little knob here like that. This button here, if you press it for a long period of time, you go into the group settings. So I don't know why it doesn't default to the group you're on. That would be handy if it did, because then you could set it without having to go back to that group. But it allows you then to go into whatever group that you want. So these are the memory groups. So here, let's say group five, if you want to go in there and, and set that up to something different, you can set it up and you know make it 10 volts if that's what you want and press this until you pop out again then group five should then be set the way that you, you wanted it set so okay so that's how that's done this gives you all the the information that you need about the status of it and uh, this gives you your energy in uh, amp hours watt hours and the time that it's been turned on it just gives you your input this gives you the ambient temperature now, if you go over here and press the home button for a short period of time, it gets you into the settings menu. And here you can set over voltage protection, over current protection, over power protection, over temperature protection, and under voltage protection. What the under voltage protection is, is for the power coming into it. And then if you go over here with this arrow, you get into the system settings, which are just the language, theme, brightness, volume. So I don't really know what they mean by metering. In the manual, they call it the measurement switch. Don't know what that means. And then if you go over to the next one, it's just the information about it. If you press this on off key here for a long period of time, it's, it's locked. So if you try to press something and say key to unlock, press this for a long period again, and then it'll unlock it. 
So one of the things I wanted to mention, these things aren't a standard distance apart. So normally for me to put a scope on here, I would use one of these and I put a scope adapter in there and then I'd have a really short ground and it, it's convenient to do that and then put my, my power takeoff in through here out to my load. But I can't do that in this case. So what I have to resort to is uh, putting little wire pigtails. Let's see, can I get this up here for you? Putting little wire pigtails tightly wound onto a scope probe and then I'm going to try and put them up in here without putting them in too far so that they cause a problem with getting banana plugs in. Every single Fernisi product does not have that spacing correct. It's either too narrow or too wide. I don't know why they insist on that. I don't know if they don't think it's important, but it is important. I'm now unable to use a standard fixture on this and I have to resort to some gimmickry. Fernisi, please get that right in the future. Understand that it is an industry standard. Enough said about that. I'm not going to complain about it anymore. I want to see what it works like. So uh, let me get this uh, scope attached up to it and we'll get it on a load and we'll start running some current through it and see how it behaves. Okay, I've got it all hooked up now. We've got a load on here. We've got the power coming in and I've got the scope probe attached. You should see the scope up here. And we can see now that we're outputting 0 0.05 volts. Let me get a measurement on that. Okay, so you can see there it's uh, reading 0 0.49 volts. So that's pretty accurate. I'll have this on the side here and we'll show you as we go up through a couple of voltages to see whether or not it's keeping accurate. All right, so let's have a look at that scope there. So we got about, uh, what have we got? Six millivolts peak to peak, noise and ripple, less than a, a microvolt RMS. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to start bringing the voltage up now and you'll see how I use the controls here to, to, to make that happen. Press this thing here to begin a voltage setting. So let's bring it up to like one volt. Yeah, okay, the noise and ripple have changed a little bit. They're actually lower now. So if you look at that, we're, like, we're, under, we're under five millivolts on average. Let's bring it up to, why don't we say 10 volts? It's changed again in nature, but uh, it looks like the frequency has gone up a little bit. You may not be able to see that clearly, but I, I can see it. So we're up around about seven, under eight millivolts, peak to peak. And uh, the, the output voltage is very accurate. It's right on actually. So really nice there. Let's bring it up to 15 volts. See what's happening here. So we're up to 62 watts, 4.1 amps. We're still below one millivolt peak to peak. That's phenomenal. Let's just bring it right up to its maximum, as high as it'll go. Okay, we're in constant current mode there. In, in constant current mode, we can see it's got a little bit more noise there. So we're up around about 30 millivolts, and that's that's perfect. Now if you look at that, oh, okay, it went into overcurrent protection mode. That's good. That's because I was going to show you that, but I guess it, it just flipped into it there. So let's, uh, let's first of all bring the, the I set down. So now the way to get out of one of these shutdowns, just briefly press the, the power out switch here and that'll reset things and bring it back. We're back in constant current mode, but it's still extremely low. Like we're, we're putting out 32 millivolts of, of noise. But the thing is, if, if we back off a little bit here on the voltage to get it out of constant current mode, you see the noise goes away. So we're, we're now back down to about 10 millivolts. Phenomenal, 200 to one uh, signal to noise ratio. So here we are, we're sitting here, we're, we're putting out uh, 90 watts of power and this thing's not even warm, it's at room temperature. Because of the slightly unusual barrel jack, I've had to go find one. I found this is in my parts drawer. I guess it came from one of those universal power adapter things. It's one of those little plug-in ends. And it just happened to be the right size with the 2.5 millimeter pin and the 5 millimeter outside. And I've just made this little pigtail to go on here. So I'm now going to connect it up to 32 volts coming in so we can get the full power out of it. And we'll do the same sort of thing. We'll start out down low and then we'll come all the way up to a full 30 volts out and start, see if we can get 150 watts out of the thing. Okay, so I've got the big power supply plugged in here. Got the load changed to take the new voltage output 
And let me switch, just switch over here to the DC barrel jack. And there we are. So we've got 32.02 volts coming into it. We're set up here for one volt out and we're up to maximum current. So we'll turn that on. We got our one volt out. And according to the Bryman here, we're at 0.997 volts. It's, again, it's pretty accurate. Let's bring this up to, let's say 15 volts right away. Okay, 15 volts. It's uh, around about one millivolt, peak to peak. Let's uh, bring it all the way up to the top. Okay, we've got 30 volts coming out. We've got 150 watts, 4.999 amps. And we have just a very, very slight little rise, maybe a two millivolt increase in noise and ripple. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Can't really find anything wrong with this. One of the things I want to test further is when it's doing its hardest, let's try turning it on and see what that looks like. See what kind of characteristics it has. I've got the trigger set, single shot mode, and we're just going to turn it on and see what happens. That looks pretty good to me. We've got a slight little bump there where it goes back down again and back up again, but I don't think that's going to harm anything. I think this is pretty good. Let's try that again. That's excellent. I'd be willing to bet that that little bump down there at the bottom of that is due to the inductance in this cabling here. What does it look like when we turn it off? I see a little bit of overshoot and ringing. Yeah, we got a little bit of ringing and we got a bit of overshoot up there. So it goes up to 42.6 volts peak to peak. So we get a little undershot here and upshot. But this here, this has definitely got to do with the inductance. I'm going to blame that on the big long cable we have coming here. Because once we switch it off, there's absolutely no load on it at this end here. That's my bet. Let's have a look at a slightly reduced voltages here to see if it's the same or better or worse. Let's bring it down a little bit here. We'll turn it off at 10 volts and see what happens. So we can see there's a lot less of that nonsense going on here. There's, there's less energy stored in these wires. So let's see what it looks like when we turn it on at 10 volts. It says it's nice at 10 volts. I don't know what you guys think, but I think we got a a winner here, or Fernisi has a winner here. We could try that one more time, see if it's consistent. It is. Okay, one more thing I want to test for. We've got 10 volts coming out of it, and you can see here I've got the, the trigger set up for 9.7 volts. As you can see, I've got an amp going through, so I've got a 10 ohm load. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch down to a 3 ohm load and see if that deviates at all. So we'll put this on single. And now we're going to switch to three ohms now. So, okay, there wasn't even a 0.3 volt variance in the output voltage. So let's, uh, let's bring it up here to 9.93 volts. So now we're going to look to see if there's even a 0 0.07 volt dip if we change the current on it. We're back here at 10 ohms and I'm going to go change it to three ohms right now. No deviation whatsoever. All right, uh, let's put it back into auto mode and see if it, it goes up. So we'll bring it up to 10.03 volts and we'll see if taking the load off it causes it to go up and then we'll try, if that doesn't do anything, we'll put the load back on it and see if it goes up. So here we are, we're ready to go here. We're at a three ohm load. We're gonna to go to a 10 ohm load right now. Nope, it didn't budge. Okay, let's try that three ohm load again right now. Nothing. It maintains the voltage even with a sudden change in the output requirements. It just handles it gracefully. You know what? I'm impressed. For the cost of this thing, how well it's made, I can't see anything other than, you know, the spacing on the banana jacks and the, the weird size they chose for the barrel jack. I've got no complaints with this. And we'll check the voltage one more time. We got 10.006 volts. It's the voltage is right on, you can trust that. So let me know what you think of it down in the comments and also let me know if you want me to go ahead and do the PC software side of things. I'm more than glad to do that. If let's say we get 30% of you guys down there want to see it, I'll, I'll do a video on it. Okay folks, that's all I have for you today. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.